And we're back, previously in the God Breaking. Our group of heroes found themselves um, locked in battle with a, a hideous creature. A creature that they'd summoned from um, a completely different plane on, on Mount Celestia. This is Malibolja, lord of the fifth level of hell, um, devil of the highest order, uh, one of the, um, the key lieutenants and key pieces in Asmodeus' uh, plans, um, the builder and maintainer of the red veil that separates the heavens from the rest of the, the mortal planes. Only through the sacrificial act of a part of your soul, um, of Adis's awakened soul, and through the ancient abyssal power um, or infernal power of Sashie, Queen of the, da of the Damned, were you able to pull him down to the, your plane right now, to Lunaria. So you guys are currently in Sashie's underground um, chamber deep beneath the, the ocean of Lunaria, underneath the seafloor, um, where you summoned and pulled Malabolja down to, to where you are. You guys engaged in battle with him for all of last, um, last round being smacked around and realizing that he was of a degree of power um, beyond your, your ability to, to interact with. Um, his his mastery over the arcane was unparalleled. Um, and after fighting with him for a while in an act of desperation, Deimos, you used your group's final miracle. And you asked to awaken your party. <laughs> yes, it is all used up. To awaken you and your friends, um, more so, to, to enhance your awakening, to, to go awaken to 2.0. And in that surge of light, um, you all came back fully rested, fully um, empowered, and your bodies and your minds have changed. So, some of the things that happened that, that changed amongst you guys, um, you all leveled up in your primary class, um, you gained a plus 10 to, to constitution and a plus 10 to a stat of your choice. You gained a 10th level spell slot, um, and in a second here we'll link all the 10th level spells so you guys can see what you all can do. And you also gained this ability, the Music of the Spheres. I've tweaked it slightly since last week. So once per week, you can align yourself. Um, I know, the once per week thing, I was play, playing with that. I was thinking about every long rest after it's expelled, you roll to see if it recharges. Let's do that instead. Here, I'll change it. I have the old version in my sheet. Okay, mm -hmm. I'm you do? linking that up. Uh, wait, wait, wait. This. Up Yo. Can you link the table that's in there as well? So it'll be shared. Yeah, I'm too lazy. We'll leave that once per week for now. <laughs> Oh yeah, you guys also gained another level of spark, a 1d5 spark. So you had the pre, the three previous le um, sparks and also a one d uh, single-use 1d5 spark. Let's see, do you guys all have that in your inventories or your ability sheets? Mm -hmm. 
had that in mind. Dang it. Okay. I put it in yours, Amos. I think. Oh, did you? Cool. Yeah. You guys, you guys' character sheets are getting so. So I know. <laughs> I'm just gonna delete like everything that's like level like three to five. That's funny. Like imagine if this was paper, pen and paper. What kind oh. of? What kind of? Uh, what sheet you guys you stick have? The, um, spheres thing. Mm. Abilities tab. Oh, it's on your traits. abilities tab near your boons. Oh, but, oh. Cool, cool, but cool, if cool. you drag and drop it on your actions tab, you can put it in your awakened section. That's what I did. Yeah. So, um, Mind Shatter, it's it's powerful because they had to f if they had to succeed three intelligence saves in order to to save it. I feel um, like each of our new enemies will have ten, um, if, you know, like legendary saves now. <laughs> <laughs> um, and it's a uh, it's its effect is they're they're pretty universal. So, what's the DC for it? It's your DC. Okay. Oh, I guess we all are casters, aren't we? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, we're definitely all casters still. So we'll go with this. Let's see here. I think it's actually pretty strong. Um, but we'll see how it works out. Okay. Did you get your juju back? My what? Uh, Deimos. Oh. Did you get your spells back and stuff? Demos never had spells. He just had the stuff that Tempest allowed him to have. Oh. Oh, do you? Are you um? <laughs> yeah. You haven't tried Demos. anything yet. You're still you're still affected by Cornelius' Out curse. Out of juice. Out of juice. You're you're still affected by Cornelius' curse. I don't even know what that does, but I have it. It's like herpes, but in the year eight hundred. The um, okay. So let's look at um, tenth level spell slots, tenth level spells, so you guys can all see it. Deimos's yours is called Deimos didn't hear no bell. <laughs> <laughs> um, if you cast it on yourself, it's duration one hour, so it's not like a um, a death ward where it's just eight hours. Um, it takes your your tenth level spell slot. It's duration one hour. Um, when you hit zero hit points, it procs just like a death ward, super death ward, so you can't be. Um, insta shot, you know, one um, instant killed. So you come back with one hit point, but um, you gain immunity to damage for one d4 uh, turns. Your size is increased to normal. Um, you do max damage. Your size increased to double normal. Um, you you start doing max damage. You're buffed to the highest level of super demos, and also your hair grows long and turns sexy gold. Okay. Acceptable. We look luscious. And you know what? What the hell? Let's take it 1d4 plus 1 rounds. Just to be fun. There we go. Be better. Okay. So basically, you, you keep yourself from dying, you come back with immunity for 1d4 plus 1 rounds, and then when it go burns off, you ha you're back to 1 hit point. Um, but while you are glowing gold, you do max damage, and you are super buffed. Actually, here, here. Max le uh, highest level Super Deimos does max damage... Um, let's add one extra All right, highest level super demos plus one attack. Holy shit! So you have one extra attack, not not attack action, but attack. So whatever your highest level of haste is, um, so one extra attack and max damage. Okay, so it's it's basically like the next level of super saiyan. Oh, legit, legit. All right, that's Deimos's. Uh, Renly. Renly. Renly, yours is pretty cool. Um, you, you know what, why, where it stems from? Renly wanted more tea, tea drinking companions. She's really <laughs> lonely. <laughs> but yours, can be, yours is super broken. It can, can be can be made broken. Um, it this can, is yours. but you know Renly. <laughs> <laughs> well, what am I supposed to do with that? <laughs> She'll be like, yes, I can now have tea with so-and-so. <laughs> All right, yours is Echo of the Wild. It's a one-minute cast time. Touch. Uh, your range is touch. Um, you shape an illusory, illusory duplicate of a creature from your memory, I should say. From your 
memory. So not from a target? Damn it. From a target's memory? Oh, that's, yeah, that's crazy. Special. That's why I made sure it was like half the points. Uh, <laughs> from a target's like memory? Yes. All right, all right. Yeah, but it has all right, to be right. a target, willing target's memory. All right, all right. From willing target's memory. We'll, we'll, we'll keep it in for now. Okay. We'll see how it goes. If the CR rating of the creature is at or below your level, the duplicate is a creature formed from molecules in the air and ground. It can take actions and otherwise be affected as a normal creature. However, if the creature is above your level, you must make a spellcasting check, the DC of which is based on the creature's CR. Um, if successful, you roll a D100, 25% chance for the creature to be formed with madness. And this, I made the madness permanent. Woohoo! Okay. Um, but if you roll high, then you're fine. So this is an exact duplicate, except it doesn't have equipment, and it disappears once it hits zero hit points, and it has an echo of its original memories and emotions. But basically, it becomes its own person. Indeed, yes. Um, if you or anyone else casts Echo of the Wild, any currently active duplicates created with a spell are instantly destroyed. So you can't create yourself and have that creation create another one, and then that creation create another one. Oh my god, okay, that makes sense. I didn't think of that! <laughs> That's a simulator move. Yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah, this is the first line from yeah. the original. But this thing can... Um... This thing can... I was realizing it could be very broken, so I was like, it should probably not be, you know, someone's enemy that's super OP. <laughs> well, I mean, that, that'll be that'll be balanced with a spellcasting check. That I is true. So, um, the thing, the, the creature can, um, um, regain hit points and recharge and regain spell slots, unlike si Simulacrum. Okay, so yeah. it, become, and, it, becomes yeah, it yep. becomes, it becomes another creature. Yeah, it becomes another creature. Right, so you that can make good. a whole other person until I create a new one, and then they're like, "What did you do?" Yeah, Elwyn, yours has a sense to be much super. Better about mine. Now I thought mine was gonna be overpowered. <laughs> well, yeah. <laughs> you know, I'm well, just gonna be doing this to have tea companions. <laughs> yeah, it depends on how she uses it. Um, Deimos's, Deimos's might not be strong enough. I'll have to play with it. Elwyn, yours is pretty strong. So right now, so Elwyn already has this this level nine spell, right? Fire God from the Sky. This is his 10th level spell. <laughs> Fire and Thunder. Can they stack on top of each other? Yes, they can. Ooh, ooh. So Owen is slowly turning himself into like an actual god. <laughs> <laughs> What? He was always a god. Now he'll just be more. No, do you remember? Do you remember where the the fire god from the sky came from? Yeah. Who named him that? From the goblin. Uh... Oh yes. What's my goblin friend's name? Oh, I forgot his name, but it was totally the Call goblin. Gabo the goblin. Hold on, I have it written down in my notes. <laughs> grab my backpack. <laughs> you have it written down. Oh shit! I don't even know what it was. Uh, okay. Oh my god, you actually wrote that it stacks the fire god from the sky. <laughs> yes, it does. In the thing. That's my <laughs> first question, too. <laughs> um, snivel face. That's right, Snivel face. You're, you're the fire god from the sky. And that's been your name, your, your self proclaimed term ever since. I love that you're still a glass cannon, comparatively. <laughs> At I mean, some point, there'll be something that will double or triple your hit points, but not today. <laughs> Elwin's got 822 hit points. Also, he's taken, like, uh, he's resistant to everything, so double that. During the spell, yes, but then, like, looking at Deimos, I'm like, yeah. <laughs> okay, and we're still working on Adises, so we don't have Adises yet. Um, I think that's everything. So you guys hear extra spark? Yeah, music of the spheres. So the music of the spheres thing, um, 
freely manipulate all inanimate physical material within a thousand feet of you. That's like, I mean, like you guys can do whatever you want. Um, like you're basically Magneto with all, all, all physical material you, around you. You realize that is, you realize that is free kill anything you throw at us, right? Make a, well, make it do it. Depends on what you do. Free, free, freely manipulate all inanimate physical material so that rock is going to fly through that demon's face oh yeah speed yeah. of light yeah yeah, yeah along yeah, yeah, yeah. with every other rock <laughs> yeah i mean that, 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 that's a given you're, like i said you're basically you're basically magneto but the stuff you guys yeah. are going to be fighting it's going to take a whole lot more than a rock <laughs> to kill because, what what do you consider physical because everything in our world is physical so i'm like non, we could literally so rip it you are you would be oh. living things Okay. I'll show you what physical is. It's it is matters. Inanimate, inanimate, inanimate <laughs> typically means something muscles. that is non-living. Yeah, no. it's non-living, and it's um, it's phys all, all molecules and atoms. Okay. Oh, okay. Anyone know a good vet? Because I don't know if these pythons are still living. <laughs> I start flexing. These pythons <laughs> are sick. Oh gosh. It's it's literally it's literally all you become Magneto with everything. Alrighty. All right. Um, the other one, double all weave effects. So, I mean, that can get pretty sick. Indeed. It's basically all, double double effectiveness of all spells <laughs> for the one round. <laughs> and then mind shatter. Mind shatter is your way to just just fuck with high level creatures' um, abilities. It's basically our, it's basically our one round. Two of us get rid of all of their legendary saves. That also. All right, might be too strong, but we'll see how it goes. Anyway, I cannot wait for you to see how how you make sure make, make it all nerfed because the enemies get even more OP, and then we're like, fuck, we can't do anything. <laughs> well, see, that's that's the fun part about being in DM because whatever I give you guys, I can always go bigger. <laughs> yes. There's 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 literally no limit. <laughs> I feel like the scale is now instead of into two, it's like to the power of two. <laughs> so did I, I? I told you guys what my inspiration for this this campaign is, right? It's um, it's kind of like Dragon Ball Z ish. Um, but have you guys ever watched um Gurren Lagann, the anime? A long time ago, yes. So in the beginning of the of the of the first season, um, he's this little kid who's basically basically digging a hole through the ground, right? Um. Mm -hmm, yeah. And then at the end of the final season, which is season two, like they're literally piloting robots. They're throwing galaxies each at each other, and their attacks span the whole known universe. <laughs> so, <laughs> so how creep much? Yeah. So yeah, that's that's that was my that's my inspiration for this game. <laughs> And I was super happy to, to go along that way until, until I was heartbroken to find out that, that Fantasy Grounds has limitations on how many dice it can roll. <laughs> so, <laughs> I'm like, oh, there, there's actually a way around that. Is there? Ooh, if other, yes. other, no. But yeah, the actual dice don't, rolling, but don't, other than the text. Don't, yeah, you have to do it text. Don't use yeah. the dice. Yeah, you have so to like, do text. So like, if you want to roll, if you wanted to roll a hundred d hundred, just do a hundred d ninety nine, and then it'll actually do it. Well, Elwyn's, um, your, your, um, Tesla Fraction spell, Tesla Fraction ability, that's, like, the biggest hidden thing we have right now. It's 100d100 lightning damage, and it breaks fantasy grounds. Yeah, yeah so if you just did... It like that? If, yeah. yeah. Yep, he did d101, yeah. That's how you yeah. get around it. But go bigger? <laughs> oh. <laughs> and it's, and... What I found out by reading on the Fantasy Grounds forum is the die limit is actually dependent on the die you're rolling. Some of them it's 30, some mm. of them it's 40, and some of, and I think one of them it's 50. That's just wrong. Anyway, all right, you guys are fighting Malabolja. Um, you've shattered the weave in this area. Um, now the weave naturally regenerates, but it, you're, it's, it's definitely down for a little while longer. So he's gotten all physical. Um, and you realize that he's a very um, proficient physical fighter. His arm, his his spell casting arms basically just pull out more shards, and now he's doing multiple attacks. Um, Deimos, you are on his back, grappling him. 
and mm -hmm. everyone else, you just like popped up in your awakened level two form. So with that, we are going to fight. All right, and you guys can't hear it, but I just changed the music for the recording. So, all right. Ooh. Uh, let's go. Let's pick it from the top of initiative. Tempest is here. Reset Did it. we roll? <laughs> yeah, you reset it. We don't have an initiative. Oh, alright, sorry, everyone roll initiative. Oh my god. <laughs> we just lost our 20s. <laughs> Um, oh, by the way, um, with your last hit, uh, whoever it was, you guys um, brought Malabolgia down to below 25% hit points. So you see him, his body begin to flex and change. Um, cracks in his skin begin to, to burst forth with like um, fire and, and, and seeping, oozing reddish black blood. You see the spines on his back fold down and overlay themselves. You see his skin begin to harden. So, um... Shit. Okay. There we go. Alright. Um, Deimos, you're first. <laughs> Alright. Um, so I have grappled. El Demoso is to be like, if you, if you like, I can make you hit yourself even harder than previously possible. And um, since he's grappled, I'm going to try to restrain him by uh, stabbing himself with at least one of his arms. All right, so you're taking his arm, you're trying to shove it into his own face. Yes, just stick it in your face. Stab it in yourself. I mean, he'll, he'll, he'll fight against it, but. All right, so um, you're managed to take because he has he's got eight arms. So you take one of them and you, and you, you slash himself with it. So he's going to. And again, all magic is dead right now because the weave is broken. So I guess that's, there goes your tenth level spells. <laughs> <laughs> no, the, the the weave is is repairing itself. It'll 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 the effect that you did had on it, Renly, will will go away in a little bit. Well, um, that's just it. Unravel any existing magic that can automatic to smell magic. When you broke the weave? Mm-hmm. Like yeah, if there's anything magical in that vicinity, like will it automatically be dis It was. Like we you guys all all I removed all your magical effects off of you, but he also had layered down a bunch of different traps and um remember he had he had cast um Adis's symbol or whatever mm, that, yeah. that his ninth level spell like a bunch of times all over the room okay. and when you broke the okay. weave it canceled all magic in the area so that okay. so that's coming back slowly okay, okay. <laughs> since I haven't grappled I will have my uh, my boon technically goes off so I can punch him one more time okay <laughs> 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 His face. Uh, bonus action, activate my shield. You activate your shield? To do what? Uh, I lied, I lied. I'll, I'll, I'll wait a turn. Okay. Um. Oh, on, it's my turn? Yes, friendly, you're up. Okay, I'm not, uh, considering I have no magic and I am a little gnome, you know, with very limited options right now, I pull out my little bag with a whole bunch of things in it, and I remember I had some pebbles, you know, a pouch of 25 pebbles, and I throw it at the area where the weave is down, which should be right above him, um, and those pebbles were, um, originally transformed boulders um, that I've been carrying around and so I'm hoping really? that the magic gets expelled <laughs> this is in my original character sheet <laughs> oh my goodness 
And so I am going to... I didn't write any description down on it, but it was in my original email. Like, I'm just carrying these pebble, these boulders that transform into pebbles, you know, just in case. Okay, yeah, yeah. And... So, so you, as you toss the pebbles over, their their enchantment breaks. So 25 pebble uh, boulders just rain down on him and Deimos. Yay! <laughs> oh, sorry, Deimos! <laughs> <laughs> I got him grappled. I'm gonna try to use his face as my cushion as much as possible. So, so the question is not not how many, not whether or not you get hit. It's how many you get hit by. <laughs> so, <laughs> so Damus, you're smaller. You're smaller, so I'll, you can roll a d4. He'll roll a d20. Shit. Okay. <laughs> I caught as much as I could. All right, Renly. So, um, you need to make two rolls for me. So, so the boulders, I mean, we'll, we'll say they're pretty big boulders. Roll a d8 for, um, for every hit. So, uh, against Deimos, oh. roll, like, 4d8, and then against, um, him, roll 16d8. Oh, oh, 4d8 and then 16, okay. Zedo, you get. Okay, Deimos, take 22. Is it considered bludgeoning damage? Yeah. So you take half, Deimos. Why is he taking oh, I was going to ask you. Um, yeah, no, so does my cleric ability, like the one for my level uh, 20, go away? Yeah, it goes away. Okay, let me... Uh, wait, 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 hold on, let me read the ability. It's like the class feature of just whatever. Hitting What's it called? Level. Uh, Avatar of Battle is the very first thing on there. Avatar of Battle. At 17th level, you gain resistance, bludgeoning, piercing, slashing damage from non-magical weapons. I'll say that's a magical effect. Okay. Because cool, cool, why cool. the hell not? No, no. Right. <laughs> okay, so that's 68 damage, I guess. <laughs> yeah, to him, that was uh, okay. Yeah, that's about it. If I'm like, hmm, okay, so I attacked, right? Yep. And so now I can move slightly away because I have a uh, mobile. <laughs> so I'll be oh, like, right. all yours, guys! <laughs> that's right, that's right, okay. Alright. You're like, you're like um, a hobbit rolling away between yeah. Urukai's legs. In, you um... got this, guys! <laughs> yep. Alright, Tempest is going in. He's going in hard. Unfortunately for you guys, Tempest's attacks are. Eh. Demos, are you wearing gauntlets? <clears throat> um, no, I have my fists. You don't wear anything on them at all that's an inanimate object? Um, water. These, these, uh, brass knuckles that, that I have. I so you have brass knuckles? Off. You have brass knuckles? I haven't so, ever taken okay. them off. <laughs> Alright, I'm gonna see how much I can infuriate Midas with my turn. <laughs> Since I can't do this. anything. Yeah, but uh, so food. is the music of the spheres in action, I'm assuming? Uh, yes. Alright. So, and t uh, Tempest just went up and hit him with his mace, right? His sword, yeah. His great sword. Alright, so I'm going to use the manipulate all inanimate physical material within a thousand feet of me. And I'm going to make Tempest's hammer hit him in the face, Deimos' fist plow into his back, rip all of his spikes away from him and impale him with them, and then have my, my spike that I got go sideways at the speed of light and cut off all his arms, his legs, his nuts, and his dick. So uh, it's all moving around. So um, he's talking about he's moving Damos's gauntlets, not his his arm. Oh, okay, that makes sense. So I was like, wait, what? Yeah, yeah, but only 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 the only my my black shard thing from the lady is moving at the speed of light. So it's like Damos doing a melee attack. Tim wow. is doing a melee attack. Speed of light. Are you ripping their hands off? No, no, they're not moving at the speed of light. Only the so black. Just okay, the speed of Only light the move. demon killing shard is moving at the speed okay, of light. Good. But then you destroy it. <laughs> Any matter that moves at the speed of light reduces to not matter. It's moving really fast. It's not moving at the speed of light. <laughs> <laughs> Duh. Um. But the intent is to cut all his arms off, his legs off, his dick, and his nuts off, and then and impale his torso with his own spikes. And if there's any other in, inanimate objects that I can see lying around, I hit him with them too. Yeah, that so you're, 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 on you're my party. 
you're, you're, you're Darth Vadering him. You're, you're throwing stuff at him. You're magnetoing him. You're, all the stuff is swinging, spinning around, smashing into him. Your spike is is blasting through his his body, oh. um, spinning through his core, all that stuff. Yeah. And when his dick falls off, I shove it up his ass because it becomes an inanimate object. Um. And his balls go in his mouth. So uh, what happens is here is um, you begin to to pummel him with all this this stuff, right? And you're already noticing that, like I said, his his carapace had hardened um, when he dropped below one quarter hit points. So his 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 physical exterior is much resilient to all this physical damage that you're raining down on him. Um, the spike itself, the hell shard. Um, I mean, it's 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 breaking. It's 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 more effective than the rest of it at breaking through things, but the hell shard is not um, an automatic kill or automatic penetration through demon armor. Uh, right, right. Yeah, the hell shard. Do, all it do does, I at least get his balls and his dick off? <laughs> the hell, the hell spike. It says that if you, if it if a physical attack deals a killing blow, then you sever it. Then you sever its soul. Right, right. I wasn't expecting it to kill him. I was just trying yeah. to fuck him up. I mean, all it is otherwise is a spike. So it, it's, oh, it's so it a little bit, oh, so it doesn't do shit unless it actually kills him. Oh joy! It's a little bit more. <laughs> it's a little bit more effective at 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 cracking his carapace. Mm -hmm. Um. But um. Well, like with the first hit, if it doesn't look like it's gonna like with the first hit, if it didn't look like it was gonna cleave an arm off, I would focus exclusively on gutting his dick off. Okay. And then I would make it move up to Deimos' hand so Deimos could beat him to death with it. Okay. So you're, you're pounding into him. I'm going to say that over the course of six seconds, as all these these bludgeoning um, and, and, and piercing attacks fly at him, I mean, you're, you're, not, you're, not just, you're not just using those things. You're pulling in stone. You're pulling in um, um, chunks of, of profane ones, <sighs> like tentacles and stuff, like like the the, the, the oh. those things from the wall and wrapping it around him and smashing him bludging him that kind of stuff oh, hold on we're underwater aren't we well technically yeah you're underneath the ground and, the, and above the ground is the water oh shit hey Deimos and Elwyn can you guys protect yourselves trying to kill yourself no because you know what happens when you take water and compress it enough, right? So I'm gonna let you talk, and I'm gonna go off of what you think happens. No, because I, 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 can't, I can't remember. <laughs> like you, you, have, you guys have abilities that can like shield you from damage, right? Okay, to an extent. <laughs> like, what are you gonna do? So this whole room has a lot of water in it. I'm gonna shove it all down his throat. On top of all that other stuff too. Okay. Since water isn't an animal object, I guess, maybe. Well, each molecule of water, I guess. Make him nice and fat. I mean, what I'm saying is you can flow the water into his face. You can't make him open his mouth, kind of thing. I think he's like an armored armadillo or something right now. Like, there's no cracks for things to penetrate through at the moment. Oh, come on. He had to have went, <gasps> whenever I tried to cut his dick off. <laughs> Uh, I'm gonna say that in the course of, of 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 six seconds, with all the things coming through, you're blasting him with the water, you're ripping things, because this is, this is a very impressive ability you're 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 bringing to bear here, right? You are literally um, hurling molecules and pebbles and um, rocks and um, the the the, sh the hell shard, and you're using Deimos' fist to pummel into him. Your eyes glow um, a brilliant blue, and your hands become encircled in arcane and uh, in, in awakened uh, light. You tune yourself into the the very the very forces that that align and rotate the planes, um, and you bring that to bear. So this whole, all the matter, matter, the physical material in this room becomes putty in your hands, as like the ground is shifting beneath you guys. Bending and warping, um, it's a very, it's a very disorienting effect. So, Adis, I'm gonna say that in over the course of the next six seconds, you are able to rain down. Let's see here. 
3,000 hits on him. Okay, and that's a comp. That's that's a, that's a that's a a reduction, a reduced way of a numerical way of saying that all, all the water that you're 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 trying to inundate him with, and all the all the different attacks, and you know that you're you're just swirling and spiraling around him. Okay. Okay. So. Roll a d8. A d8. Okay. <laughs> is it is it a relevant roll that I could spark it? Um, no, no, no. no. Okay. Um, like you could spark one of the individual attacks. This is already an awakened ability. Oh, okay. Okay. Um, so. Okay. So three thousand times eight. 24,000. Holy shit. Oh, god damn. So. Let's see here. Alright, yeah, well, that kills him. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, what? <laughs> I did 24,000. Holy shit. I was peeved that he took my mask. Okay. Or that he made me throw my mask away. Well, can you all describe this in cinematic effect because he yeah. just died? Yeah, yeah. So I mean, <laughs> like I said, the, the world around you is is begins to break apart and 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 splinter. Um, it's not just chunks of rock and the hell spike that's that's going at him. It's it's literally like I said, he's literally bombarding him with molecules, um, attacking him on a, on a molecular level. Um, you can see, and Deimos above him, just hammering down with his fists rapidly. It's just six seconds, but um, this 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 attack is begins to break apart and crackle and, and splinter the the armor that he has flowing around um, his heart and carapace. The um, slow, um, just over the course of seconds, you see him begin to slowly disintegrate, breaking apart, torn to pieces as the hell spike. Um, almost as fast as the eye can see, just zipping back and forth through him, punching through him, ripping apart at him. Um, and when all is said and done, you see a much like perforated version of Malabolja there. He um, and it was the hell spike that killed him, honestly. It was the the final gasp of, of life that, as the hell spike punches through his his torso, um, it su severs his soul, his immortal soul, and it renders him lifeless. Um, his body, just a burnt out husk, collapses down to the ground. And as it hits, it kind of breaks apart like brittle clay. So all across the ground are brittle, broken, small chunks of him, um, completely dried up, completely withered away, and removed of all structural integrity. Yet. Okay. I know I probably have no chance in hell since this dude's from two floors up, but I would like to attempt to learn his form. Great. Roll. You should take the form of this broken down dirt on the ground. Roll the arcane check. <laughs> I'm collecting pebbles. No, I, for, I yes. forget. Am I, am I allowed to spark these or no? I no, can't remember. Um. Okay. Alright. I'm gonna go. Pick up whatever I can find. That looks cool. Hey, Davos, have you ever attacked that fast in your life before? Um, so I actually <laughs> did that myself. I know, it was pretty cool. Yes. Thanks for the power up, bro. Cool. You're welcome. You can buy me a smoothie later. I create a smoothie out of the. Oh, in the last second of that, I create Damos a smoothie out of. No, I said you have to buy me one. I did, I just bought it. One. I bought it. It's not how no, it no, no, there's no way you can do I that. I made myself. <laughs> yeah, it's made out. Of, it's a demon smoothie. Okay. Uh, Adis, you get it. You get his form. Yeah. So sweet. It's all right. Yeah, was it was for the, I don't think I was here for the last one. Let's see but... if I can take it. <laughs> I can turn you into him. No, or you wait, no, well, I, I, don't, I think it, those only work on me. No, it only works on you. Yeah. I because the target, 
the target because I can't cast him on you, Deimos, because your CR is too low. Is the dirt on my head? I'm like, I am him. You guys can't even tell the difference. Oh, is his dick on the ground for Deimos? No, everything is broken down into rubble. Deimos, you find this. Oh, look what I find. Let me edit to my collection. Ooh. 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 Guys, I don't know oh, what is this is. So pimp. That is but great it's for you. Definitely going in my underwear. That is pimp, dude. That's a great find. What are you talking about? The I twin creature can do an action to duplicate a spell effect he it sees. That's amazing. Yes, but I don't do those things. Wait a minute. It duplicates the effect of the spell, correct? That's what it, that I'm reading that correctly? Mm hmm So, Deimos, you could turn into anything I could with that thing. Yeah, I don't know what you're talking about. If it, it, if it becomes like a, eyeball. if it's a spell casting thing, it will burn spell resources. Like, you're, you're creating, you're recreating the spell. But, yeah. Mm -hmm. That is, that, that is an awesome find, bro. I don't know what you're talking about. I'm just trying to connect um, Basically, what you, can, what, what you can do with that eye demos is when some ba Billy Badass uses some nasty spell on you, you can shoot it right back in his face. Or when uh, when Elwyn uses his Fire God of the Sky spell, you could use it too. But that makes no sense. It's an eye. Okay. I, I you'll, figure, you'll, figure, the, you'll figure it out the, in an hour. The magic comes back. <laughs> What? All right, so <laughs> so Dama, the magic comes back. Uh, the magic's not back yet. <laughs> Te technical, technical thing, Midas. In your world, are the week seven days or ten days? Seven. Okay, so I can't use that again for seven days. Yeah. Okay. Well, now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to make you guys roll a d20 at the end of every long rest to recharge it. Uh, oh, okay, cool. Yeah. Recharge what? The, the music of the spheres. Ooh, okay. Do we uh, each have our own, or was oh, yeah, each have your one own. of us? Oh, okay. Now, does this did, did this guy drop those swords, or are those just kind of like spikes out of his back? Those are spikes out of his back. Cool. The only thing that's on him is is the eye. Do Do they still what exist? I took him they're, from him and was beating him. They're oh. kind of broken up, on the ground. Yeah. Edwin, okay. grab one. Grab one, Demos. They don't want it. It looks like is it does it look like it's structurally sound or something kind of with away to dirt? Uh they're, they're they're kind of there's a bunch of like micro holes punctured punched through them. As part of um Adis's attack. I take a couple just for science purposes. Um can I pick one up and try to mend it? Um Yeah, it's it's a I can't restore its magic, but yeah, physically, yeah. you can maybe. physically you can you can repair the holes. It's not making it like I said, like a, a powerful weapon or anything like that. Right. I'll mint one and then give it to Damo so he can have one as a trophy if he wants it. Okay. Except to move. All right, you guys have killed Malabolja. Huzzah! Uh, Why would so, we do this again? Uh, Midas. Hmm. Quick question. Um, when do we get our 10th level spell slots back? How do those work? Um, they come SD. with a long rest, just like normal. Okay. Can I can I just have Wish as a 10th level spell without the roll to lose it for my 10th level spell? Sure. Okay. The, um... So, so... After Malabolja dies, um, there's a ripple effect. It's like you're, you guys are in like a, a soundproof room almost because the, the weave is broken. But you can tell that that there's a, an, an insane amount of magical distortion um, around you. 
And as you guys sit here and collect his remains, uh, um, the Deimos, you sift through his body, you're kind of surveying the room, trying to figure out what to do. You can feel the weave repairing itself in this area. And as it stitches back together, it reforms itself around the area where Malat Bulja died. And as soon as the weave becomes whole, so this is like five minutes later, as soon as the weave becomes whole, um, like a psychic explosion resonates through the weave. It was like this pent up energy that was built up um, from his death. Now oh, no. has, it can, can explode. Um, and, it, and, and it has um, resounding effects. It ri ri um, echoes, ripples out through, through the whole weave. And um, you can see the weave bouncing and flexing and vibrating around. Um, a lot of different aspects of uh, so he had he had um, contingencies and spells and all kinds of things built all throughout the weave in, in um, all over um, Mount Celestia, and it's specifically he was maintaining the veil. He he had he had set up you know like magical batteries to to power the veil. He had set up um, maintenances and and all these this whole host of almost a plane's worth of sub demons of sub devils to um, maintain it and, and power it. But with him dead, the, 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 the thread, the core that held it all together begins to unravel. And you can feel, you can feel that it was a, a, a significant impact. Um, it's as if a, a huge amount of tension and a huge amount of, a, a huge presence on the weave has dissipated. Um, you're not exactly sure what effect that will have across this plane and across all the all the planes that come and also all uh, you know um, everywhere else but um, y you know that it has it has indeed shaken the weave can the, I do um, something uh, <clears throat> potentially really stupid right now sure yes. what do you want to do can I double all weave effects so to magnify it <laughs> We're gonna blow up all those demons. <laughs> That's what I'm trying to do. Wait. So what you're saying? <laughs> this effect is just powerful, as like when Adis's mom walked into a buffet, but now it's like <laughs> she's not at the buffet Basically. anymore. So it's like there's so much more resources. <laughs> okay. Oh yeah. my god! What? I think I just blew up stuff that. And probably the wrong stuff that shouldn't have been blown up, but what the hey? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, okay. So yeah, Renly, you just, you just nuked every level of heaven. You see oh, all the, these re the this the shockwave effects reverberating through the weave, and you see things beginning to unravel. It's not like the weave is being broken. It's like on top of the weave, you know, as you guys interact with it, you take threads and you weave and you, and you you shape them together and you you string them along, and then they go back to where they were. That's how that's what happens as you cast spells, right? You tap into individual threads of the weave. Malabolja, over the millennia, had crafted and built structures, entire, entire, um, you know, like like settlements and and, fo and focuses of power throughout the weave, um, and and, it, and a lot of it begins to unravel now. And what you do is you amplify that destructive effect. Okay. So Alrighty. what is we're we're watching his life's work come undone, yeah. Yeah. So what has happened here is significant. Um, one thing, you feel, um, you realize, um, just in the back of your minds, you as mortal beings, that the veil, se separating the planes, has been lifted, has dissipated. The rest of it, um. The rest of what's happened is is uh, you're, you're not exactly sure, okay. So basically, what's going to happen is to so recharge your music of the spheres. This is basic. This is this is your new miracle, almost. The 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 effect that it has is pretty powerful, <laughs> obviously. Um, Indeed. At a long rest, you roll a d20, and it recharges on a natural twenty. Okay. 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 <laughs> So it's not once per week, it's on a nat 20. Correct. That seems fair. Yeah. For as powerful yeah. as it obviously is. That mind shatter, though, 
I thought about trying for that because rolling a six is basically they're your bitch. Yeah, it's 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 pretty strong, and you don't know how long the the effect will last because they had to to roll against your DC. So it's probably a fair amount of time because you guys all have pretty high DCs. So when you do it, do they roll three saves in a row, or they have to roll three saves once around and get three in a row to get out of it? Now, in, um, the initial casting is three saves. If they fail any of them, they are they are they get the effect. Afflict, yeah. And then after that, it's oh, once okay, per round. Gotcha. Now, gotcha, gotcha. What are the odds of um, Demo switching his spellcaster ability? To uh, his strength modifier. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Down the road. There, there are. Happen. Isn't there a spell that does that where you can at least temporarily change what your spellcasting status? Damos doesn't cast spells; he flexes them into existence. That is very true, actually. So, um, Damos, Damos is new thing. it's possible. This is the twenty-first century, so it's possible. Um, <laughs> it's possible to transition. Um, you're going to have to go to Cornelius, and he's going to have to pour an operation on you. Cornelius, uh, I need you to work in me. I wasn't born this. I was born different than wait, my buddy says. Wait, no, you can do it right now, Deimos. What are you talking about? Use your music of the spheres to rearrange the neurons in your brain to so make sure you spoke as the modifier. If I rearrange the neurons in my brain, I just die. Not if you, not if you do it right. You oh, so like oh. neurons in your brains that get rearranged would cause a dislapse in things. Therefore, I would die. <laughs> <laughs> so on a on a more serious note, do we have everything we need to do the the citadel thing in Bobber? The what you call it? No, we don't. Which is why I do my tenth level spell because we need to celebrate. And so I am bringing Eloise. So in. like. I think we need to uh, walk somewhere Wait, else. You're gonna, you're gonna, what are you doing, Renly? I can, I, I can bring, I can bring anyone here we need. That's why I'm asking if we're ready. No, we're yeah. celebrating. That's... I'm, I'm gonna let out a big bellow. Okay, Delwin, the... Delwin, Delwin, do you want all your girlfriends? <laughs> I don't know. I'm still yeah. trying to talk up the chick here. <laughs> um, so we should uh, we should like do the whole thing of like you know stabilizing this plane and then maybe we well, can like, yeah that's why I'm asking if we're ready so I can bring her here go down to like yeah so wait wait so oh, wait, you... wait 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 is this plane getting screwed Yo, well, this yeah plane, it's got a big giant whirlpool fucked. in it Euphemia bring in Euphemia she can take it <laughs> 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 no Euphemia, Euphemia this what about Kildrak? Bring in Kildrak. You guys decided that we need Kildrak later for the next floor, remember? Yeah, sure. Alright, I'm gonna... Um, I'm gonna use sending to send a message to her and tell Hello? her what's about to happen. Hello? And because to um, Mistra, um, since the veil's down and it has a 5% chance of failing since she's on another plane um i'm gonna send her all below like what level sending um do you have sending so, yes I do. it's uh, third level. level so i will blow i will blow we'll go three third levels and a fourth level so i can basically explain that i'm gonna gate her here and she was with all of the other people and to um and i'll give her 10 minutes um before i'm gonna cast it and to gather anybody who wants to come and um, and then I will gate them here in ten minutes, unless you guys want to, because up on land is a bitch, right? It's still like a windy inferno, so it's not really safe up there. That would be correct. Um, and I'll create a dome underneath here, because we have. Sh oh wait, hold on. First, I will cast water breathing on all of us, so we don't fucking choke to death. Since all of our magic went off of us, we can't breathe underwater. Wait, you can't breathe underwater? No, when the weave blew up, all of our shit that was allowing us to breathe underwater went away. I can breathe underwater. Technically. I right, just, Midas? I just flex my, yes. my gut. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, I will use uh, fourth level to give us all water breathing as well. 
Okay, so Dame um, Adis, as you cast Sending, what you realize is that, first of all, um, the distance between Mount Celestia and the mortal realms is not like the distance between any normal plane. Like The mortal realms are... Where's my paper? So, if, you know, you know, here's the material realm, you know, you've got the, pl the, the elemental planes of fire, right? Uh, of fire, uh, water, air, and wind, and you've got, you know, the beast lands, and you've got, you know, the, the uh, you know, the shadow realm, and all, all, all the stuff that you guys have been, been zipping back and forth to, right? Mm -hmm. There's 111 uh, planes and realms, right? All, all focusing <coughs> in. Um, around like this, some. In fact, I think I have a an image. Some envision it as even as a great wheel, right? The beast lands, um, Isgard, Limbo, uh, Pandemonium, all these places like that, right? Elysium, right? Here is the equivalent of a and Mount Celestia. So Elysium. And Mount Celestia are the equivalent of a vast distance across the Astral Sea. Um, and the veil, oops, the veil had previously separated the the, um, the heavens from the material planes. Um, but now that the veil is gone, um, the, um, the the there's still there's still the ability to to go back and forth. But that the gods themselves could not travel freely back and forth. Um, people could not go to heavens. Uh, even the highest level spellcasters could not just simply teleport themselves to heaven. Um, on the first, on, on Elysium, when you guys arrived, the, um, the, oh shit, what did I call it? The beacon. The beacon of luminosity. Um, the luminant beacon area, that's what it's called. <laughs> right? This thing? <laughs> right? Mm -hmm. That one was ball one. Figures, yeah. yeah, that was one of the gateways. That was one of the the focal points of divine magic used to transport between the heavens and the material realms. Um, back in its in the height of its power, the gods were using those things, um, the the luminant beaconary to 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 traverse the the distance between realms. Um. There was a, uh, an equivalent item, he, equivalent location, this holy place here on Lunaria, but it has since been worn away and destroyed. So you send your send your your, your message spell out into the depths, and uh, it's like trying to beam, you know, a, a radio message into space. Um, you're not sure if where it connects to. Um, you, you, it probably has enough power to go that direction, but um, being able to locate and and triangulate on the exact plane, on the exact person from this great distance. I mean, you're not terribly sure. As an aside, I mean, because I know your realm's significantly different than normal D&D, but Sending's range is literally unlimited. Mm -hmm. Well, isn't that what Sprint says, but then, like, you don't get service? <laughs> That's a lie. There's isn't because if you look at their coverage map, they do not cover every yeah. cover everyone. Well, they say unlimited. Um, so what I'm saying is that I'm sending is highly effective within the realm of the material planes, right? Within the the circle here, but Elysium and Mount Celestia are so far away, across the astral sea, that it's like, you know, um, calling long distance. <laughs> Long distance used to be a thing with landlines. Hey, uh, Elwyn, you want to go see your girlfriend? All that being said, you guys are not going to be able to zip back and forth from the material plane to here. It's a significant trip. You're not going to be able to communicate back and forth to the material plane from here very easily. Um, so it can be done. <laughs> so, so basically, what we've discovered is our whole plan from last session won't work. Um, so we'll have to figure out something else. Oh, it can be done. <laughs> it can be done from the luminant beaconary. It can't be just be so done under back the, the ground. That's, that's, that's not going to bring anybody to us, though. I mean, why not? 
because it's a it's a viewing thing. That's what you guys did with it. You viewed with it. No, no, no. You can you can send a message from there. Yeah, but if we can't get people to us, our plan still doesn't work. How will you, you, you can you can bring people in from the Luminate Beacon area. Oh, we can. Oh, I thought it was just a their no, thing you, for spy. You, you can, you can spy view. glass. Yeah, it was that too. But with with the vision comes clarity of location, and it gives you the ability oh, to, gotcha, to be gotcha. able to cast spell to, to transport. So technically, that beacon's on another plane, right? It is. All right, Elwyn, try to plane shift us to the beacon. I think Elwyn's missing. <laughs> All right, I'll try to plane shift us to the beacon. I think it's catatonic since I said it'd bring Eloise. <laughs> <laughs> That could be. I will attempt. I don't know if it'll work, but I'll attempt to plane shift us to the beacon. Owen's the only one who could. He's the only one who who learned. Remember, you guys can't teleport here. Mm -hmm. Um, but he he had gained the ability to teleport to the vigils on the other planes when you guys left Elysium. Okay. So, Owen can do it. Owen, you here? <laughs> I'm here. Yeah. Oh, plane shift us to the muting us. Okay, great. <laughs> plane shift us to the big ball beacon. No, the Please. vigils. The vigils. You can only go to the vigils. Teleportation is still highly limited. But I thought he mastered it. I will teleport to a vigil. Remember, there's three vigils on Elysium. I'm gonna go to the sexy angel voice. Oh yeah. Okay, okay. So, so you want to go to? Fertilizer. Okay, so you're going to um. Wait, wait. She was at. Tears visual. Right? visual. Oh. Uh, before we go, hey Damus, you want mm -hmm. me to? You want me to uh, mend up some more of these spike things and see if your buddy over there can make you something cool out of them? Oh no, I just need one. Because he did tell you to bring him more demon stuff, and he can make you cool shit. Damn good. Appreciate okay. it though. Too much to carry. No okay. Okay. <laughs> Just to be clear. I can, I can for you. Just be clear, Elwyn, you're getting ready to teleport your guys away from Lunaria back to Elysium. Right? So here's Elysium. Oh no, because then we can't teleport back because there's no yeah. vigil here. You can. You can't. You, the, the way back through is through. So remember on the map, the, whole, the, the gateway yeah, no, no, that no, um, Achelia opens up. Um, it kicks you up back into the Maw of the Void. That's right, the way, but we that's don't have, you got here. We all? don't. We don't have any choice but to go back because you guys won't let Tempest take this visual, so we have to go back to that beacon to bring someone here. Who I like can. how he talks to you like an angry mom does when she's trying to take <laughs> You things. guys? But she's trying wait, to teach you math. Wait, but she's I, not sound, I sound. She's I like, I so I seriously carry sound like the an angry wand. mom. Yeah, you know, I mean, got two. You're like, mom, this is like calculus. You don't do that anymore. And then she's just like, well, you know what? You're going to have to ask your dad. Read the book. <laughs> like, that's what it sounds like. It sounds like a homeschool mom. Who I'm, know lit what she's I'm about. literally intoxicated from that now. You should be. <laughs> All right. But also, like most homeschool moms. Okay. So, you guys, so just to, to recap, you guys want to bring Mistra, the resurrected Mistra, from the material realm to here. In order to do that, you need to you need to go down to the luminate. Be you go go back to Elysium, head to the luminate beaconary, find triangulate on her, figure out your bearings, and from there, um, gate her to where you are. It'll be a pretty ex a heavy expenditure. It's not just casting a spell. It's going to be a, a a little bit of a ritual because the god it required the the yeah. an effort of the gods or angels specifically specifically designated by the gods to do that. Um, to go from the material realms to the heavens. Once you've done right. that, you're gonna have to go back to Lunaria with Mistra, give her, the, um, get her to to accept the the role of gatekeeper of the vigils in order to go up to the next plane. Unless Tempest does it instead. What do you guys want to do? So I'm just gonna like re-resurrect the triton guy because he seemed like he was close enough and, uh, <laughs> and he's gonna be a king under the sea and him doubling down 
<laughs> yeah, but I, Damos, I think he needs to have a little bit of divinity to even have a chance, though. Yeah, so he did. That's the fun part. Yeah, so he definitely doesn't have any divinity if he's dead. He had divinity. Mm. Just because like he got you, just because it's he like helped. when you say just... that, like, Adis's hey, mom is part chicken nuggets. <laughs> there's a lot of chicken nuggets in there. Just, 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 just because, just because, just because Trident's portrait made you pitch a tent doesn't mean he has divinity. <laughs> the weirdest thing, if there was a tent to be pitched, your mom would have been summoned. And, and we all know that didn't happen. Oh, come on. We all know that my mom can't satisfy you, Damas, so stop. No, I, you said I wouldn't uh, satisfy her. Okay, She's okay. a hungry girl. <laughs> okay, okay. What do you guys want to do? <laughs> I, I don't care. I'm going to do whatever. Uh, I mean, it, because we took the deal with the lady, we're stuck with those two choices. I mean, we could use... Um, the dwarf guy but if i remember right the two of you had said something about needing him on one of the floors above with like the the anvil or something to make something divine forge yeah the, the divine forge you needed him for something up there um can we just take like twinkles fucking mcdiddles down there wherever he's at in that plane who? and um glitter gold oh, and just be like get your ass up here you little piece of shit hold on to this visual <laughs> Um, we could try, but the thing is, is since he's a full-on god, if he sees a gate open next to him, he'll probably just <laughs> it away. Downside to gates and powerful beings is they can just wave them away when they open. Well, we just beat up a thing that was stronger than him, so... True. I mean, I could try to, I could try to force him through a gate. That's right, Glitter right, Gold once, is down there. Once he gets here, there's no guarantee he'll do what we want, though. And you Let's know what? You know fuck. what? You know what? <laughs> Actually, now that I'm thinking about it, you remember that thing? Oh, no, that was a different... That was a different... Those were different lives. Never mind. Um, you have the best memory, Adis. Let's go get that little fuck. Hold on, hold on. Hold on, hold on. He doesn't... doesn't can I do a religion check on Glitter Gold? Because I'm having a hard time separating what was from that other session that isn't actually part of our memories. Um, because isn't there a thing about him being down there and why he's down there? And can I see if I know why? Yeah, we know why he's down there. They killed his wife. Yeah. That did hurt. You guys, um, so Deimos and Elwyn had encountered him way back when at like level five. <laughs> and, yeah. And, he offered um, me a circlet of concentration. That's right, he did. Time to go fuck himself. <laughs> yeah, I think he did. Yeah. <laughs> he told a lot of people to go fuck themselves. It's hard to keep track. Yeah. So that's that's definitely an option. You, he's the only god that you know of, I believe, that's still on the material plane. All right, but first things first. Do you guys think it's safe for us to teleport out of Lunaria? With because remember I had almost forgotten after everything that's happened, we left that crazy bitch in charge. Mm -hmm. Should we check on her really fast and then transport? I don't know. Hey, if she goes psycho, bitch, that just means there's less idiots on this plane for us to deal with when we come back. Which which crazy? Bitch? Oh, you mean Ursula? Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, come on, fire god in the sky. You don't think you can deal with her if she goes crazy? I can deal with her. I just don't want to come back and everyone's killed or whatever. Okay, let's go check on it. This, 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 is, this is what's crazy about having a game that's over three years old. Is like, there's so many NPCs. I'm trying to remember who is who. <laughs> um, yeah, we could go check on her, but we need to find one of those little strand things first, don't we, Ellen? I found one. It's right here. There aren't any near here. No, it's right there. here. It's in me. <laughs> the last time you got back, it was because Deimos was, was like Miracle Deimos, and he tore through time and space with his pecs. And Jokes on you. <laughs> and I got left there. a strand in my pocket. I found it right here. <laughs> so, um, you guys, you guys want to go back to where... 
the rest of the the rest fish of, the, sticks, of the fish people were, right? Because right now, you guys are here, right? And um, all that stuff with the 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 other the the, the, the mermaids and stuff like was like right over here. Yeah, and we need to get somewhere like right around this line, right, to get to one of the one fish lady's little tendrils. Correct. For him to teleport. So. Yeah, last time you guys went over there, you, uh, it was Deimos tearing through time and space. Yeah. The most epic display of badassery. Oh, uh, Deimos. Deimos, if you wanted to use your music of the spheres... Yeah. You might be able to ma manipulate time and, or, and space as mater physical material around Did you. Did you say you might be able to? It's a... Uh... <laughs> For, oh no! For one oh, round. No. Did Anus's mom quit? <laughs> yeah, she quit. Brought in the fourteenth platter. They, she quit, no. Deimos. It's up to you now. Did she quit when they said, "Can we quadruple supersize it"? No. <laughs> Deimos is in oh a quitter. Oh my god! Just like Anus's mom is in a quitter. <laughs> tear through space and time, Deimos. Prove it I wasn't a tear through one space and time. Just prove like you weren't Anus's well. Mom. Prove that you weren't Dorothy a one quitter. Every food with highly saturated fats in it. <laughs> prove, <laughs> prove, prove you're not a one-hitter quitter, but if you fail at this, Deimos, your new title is one-hitter quitter. I'm not a weakling. Just like her colon. It, it's actually <laughs> very cancerous, but it's strong and cancerous. <laughs> her body adapted. I'm Show trying to figure got. out, as he tears the space and, and time, does he go through the maw and do we see what the maw is at the its center? <laughs> if we just take, can I hire an Aegis's mom and plug the maw with it? Who is the great devourer? <laughs> My mom. Yes. Who, who, who is Only the greater devourer? Aegis. His mom or the yeah. maw? My mom. <laughs> The only reason the maw is here is because my mom started devouring it and it ran away. We hallucinate a lot of things. <laughs> oh my goodness. One of which might be the maw. <laughs> Alright, alright, what are you guys doing? What are you guys gonna do? You have some choices in front of you. L1 could teleport you down to Elysium. Deimos, you can try to use your, your music of the spheres to, to tear through time and space. There's no trees on here, so Renly, you can't tree walk. Tree drive. <laughs> what are you guys doing? Let's do it. Come on, Damus. Bend time and space. Break. Do it, Damus. Damus, you here? We lost him. He's, he's debating. He might have gotten disconnected or something. Oh. He he hopped out of his chair and started doing the Super Saiyan charge up position. <laughs> Hi, my name is Demos, and I want to tear time and space. Okay. So Deimos, you gonna do that in five, four, three, two. Nope. Oh, there he is. Do we hear? Okay, sorry. Yeah, I must have added. It took me a second. I lost connection. Okay, uh, cool. But uh, yeah. So I I ripped my pecs. Like um, it is his mom ripped open candy wrappers as hard <laughs> as I can, and I I sing a song and I touch my own spheres, but I I rip and I tear and I close my eyes because I. It, that's how it works, and I just find a hard time how mages have such a hard time teleporting when all you have to do is flex it. <laughs> Alright. Burn your music of the spheres. You manipulate the physical map material in front of you, and your strength is so great. Roll an athletics check. Fuck you guys. I'm gonna, I'm gonna make sure I have advantage on it. <laughs> Okay. All right, fine. Um, 
and burn your music of the spheres. <laughs> All right, it's, it's gone. Yeah. yeah. Um, you focus really, really hard. Um, you feel yourself flexing, and this is not a magical thing you're doing. This is a purely physical thing you're doing. Um, you're 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 remembering glints, uh, hints of 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 recollection of what you once were when you were under the effect of Adis's miracle. Um, massive, you know, de um, final form Deimos. You um, you reach out and channeling just your pure buffness, you know, focusing every every bit of gains that you've made over the course of your whole life <laughs> into this into this into this one this one move. Um, you 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 your hands and your eyes and your mind begin to attune to the world around you on a deeper level than than any other creature could. Um, you f you hear the whirring of the cosmos. You see the spiraling of galaxies, and in that moment, you s you you realize the truth of how things are. It's about you, the gains, right? Yeah, it's about the gains. And you reach out, and you open the world. You guys teleport from here all the way back to here. You find yourself in the city of Lumos. Where, I guess this is, oh, you were up above ground for a while. This is like a month later. Um, you guys um, had left the coalition of of the very the, the four kingdoms. So there were three kingdoms per previously. There's the Lumosian kingdom, the Italian kingdom, the the, um, the Votalan kingdom, the Anwen kingdom, and now the um, Depatian kingdom. You remember all these people? Yeah. All right. Oh, yep. A quick a quick point of order, Midas. Yep. Um, it was Profane One still there before we leave? Oh or yeah, he's still go with her. Oh, okay. Okay, no, no, he stayed there. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay. so before we teleport, Elwyn, didn't you want to, like, make him your bitch or something before we left? I don't I don't think so. Okay, and second one, do I still, uh, is Profane 2 still my friend? Like, the little flounder, polymorphed flounder? Or did I lose my thing with him when she left? Um, roll d20. Okay. Yeah, he's still around. Okay, cool. Sorry, Karen. You go back to the city of Lumos. Um, so you've got... You find that things have progressed fairly smoothly. Um, Queen Delvinia, Queen of the Lumosians, is there. You've got... And how long has it been since we were here and you guys uh, uh, interacted with these good people? Death Lord Lamprax, King of the Votalans. You have... What was her name? Oh, Corinna? Of the Enwenians? Oh, Lamprax is not the king of the of the of the, um, of the Votalans anymore. Because his sister had matured. That's right, Ursula is. Or Urus Ursula, however I spell that. And finally you have the Depatians. I forget what this name is this guy's name is but he's the um the the designated yeah, he's the patient one yeah that's right representative of the patients okay so those um you arrive and this and as you as you spring into existence you, you get uh, a few people gasp um you see some merfolk kind of flitter away uh, but you you look around and the place is humming there is a lot of activity you know they've they've carved out huge chunks of the coral reefs um, and made um, dwelling places. The Depatians everywhere. The million strong Depatian army is at work um, basically um, reforming it and renovating this area to and, and, and building a huge infrastructure to, to accept all four kingdoms. Um, they're making one massive, uh, one, one mega kingdom here. The Votalans have summoned all their people from from their home area, which was be, which is begin, 
has been beginning to be encroached upon by the Maw of the Void. Um, so the Vitalian, um population has drifted over here, has has migrated over here. Um, the Lomosians have have are, are fully sharing and helping and cooperating. There's a, a distinct harmony between the four kingdoms. Um, as you interact with the the rulers and the the various um, uh, people and um, that you had that you're acquainted with, they all recognize you and they they welcome you back in. They sh they they escort you over to the rulers again. You realize that um, somehow, joined by the might of their four um, shards, they um, these four rulers have use their, their own personality this um, uh, personality differences and own strengths and weaknesses to forge a very strong alliance you have you have Corinna's charisma and um, and wisdom you have the um, the, the depatian's pr um, severe practicality right you have Queen Del Delvinia's um, um, flair for the aesthetic and you have Ursula's um, shrewdness and cunning, um, cunning ruthlessness, but but still working for the greater good of all. Um, all that working together, they have they have formed quite the council of rulers to make their kingdoms all um, work together for their their collective survival. I'm gonna go up to Karina. Um... No, no, no. I'm gonna look for Gelly. Okay. You have to go out to the out back from the royal quarters to the information sector, um, and you okay, see. Okay, now. You are or not? Oh, no, I'll just go to Corinna. Okay. And I'm gonna tell her, "Oh, it is so lovely to see you again, my future wife number two." <laughs> um, you see her there, um, in the full might of her um, her tide shard, um, just kind of echoing through. And around her, she's embraced the might of the sea. Um, and she says, Elwyn, so good to see you. You've been gone a long time. Yes, we've been busy. But we found the vigils. We have them. Marvelous. The... Yes, we just is our, need a... Is our world to be healed now? Will we the gods just need return? to find a divine... A divine um, entity to take over it and we just wanted to stop by to make sure everything was okay and it looks like I was not expecting this this is great to see how you four have come together it will not be much longer before your world is healed yes. oh, yes. oh you speak you speak words of such hope and joy Elwyn she says we have been working hard I've been trying my best we've been using the full extent of our powers and our influence over our people. You and your friends have inspired us. Inspired us to something greater. Thank you, Elwyn. We've missed you so. I've... I've missed you so. Well, then it's sad that we have to say goodbye again, but we will be back. She says, Oh, well, if you must, then you must. We will focus on making our people stronger. Hey, Elwyn, we could wait a few hours if you want. Um, let's just get it over with. Okay. What are you doing? Do, do I, where, where, um, whenever we came to this place here, Mm -hmm. Where does the portal when we come back? Where will it be? It does, like in the map, the void, in the moth. Didn't they say that it, like it when you get your the vigils together? I wonder if we can like link where she sends us to like the vigils over here, so we don't. It was like the around moth. there. The vigils aren't gonna work until we have someone who takes them up. Remember? Well, I mean, you do you need a divinity, place, yeah. Just like down below, um, when once a divinity has claimed the, the gatekeeper role, um, they c only they can open the portal to the next realm, and also um, they can give you the power to 
to come back to return to their realm. They open up the gates, literally. All right. Um, well, guys, do you think there's anything we can do to kind of prep our return? Because once we come back, we're going to be like on them. You know, when uh, we first got here, we almost got um, ripped to shreds. We have a f we have a thing for that now. Remember, I can turn into one of those little things that can swim in the mall. All right, right. Then we I can... turn and look towards Demos as a miracle, right? Look at me. <laughs> All right. Yeah, where it jumps us, I think, is just outside where those things can swim. So I think we should be okay. But if not, we could come through. Oh no, because you can't teleport without the thing. Um, so yeah. Because if I remember right, I think when he, when Midas told me it was like this area, like right here, they weren't swimming in, or something yeah. like that. Um, so we should, we should come out where that that thing can swim, and then we should be okay. And I can swim us to the southeast, and then you can use the tendril to teleport us back to them. All right. So now seeing that everything's cool here, um, I'm ready to, you know what? I'm going to go find Gelly first. Okay. You go out back, um, head, head over to the information center. Um, and you see Gelly there working along with others of her kind. Um, their tendrils interconnected, weaving through little, little blips of light and, and energy and information, just dazzling, um, sprinting back and forth, flickering all over the place. Um, Jivarishi is off on an, on another side of the this, this plaza that you enter, um, coordinating things and communicating. And you see Geli there, um, tendrils entwined with, um, interconnected with those of others of her species. Hey, Geli. Elwin. Elwin. Gelly has missed you. Gelly. I missed you too, Gelly. Gelly remembers Gelly was first to find you, O oh great fire god from other world. I remember too, Gelly, and you will you are one of my favorite people. Gelly's or happy. Creatures. Gelly, I have a question for you. Would you like pleasure? N not right now. Well, maybe later. Um, everything, everything looks like it's going great. I just want to make sure, I just want to confirm it with you. What do you think? How are things going? She says. Indeed, unparalleled harmony between four kingdoms. Some strife, some disagreement, but rules are fair. Sharing of resources is fair. Sharing of knowledge is fair. She says. In practical terms, could not be much better. Excellent, Gelly. That's what I needed to hear so I can... Because we have to leave again. And in order to bring back... God Elwin leaves, Gelly? Not for good. We'll be back. But I just wanted to make sure that everything was okay um, before we take off again. Will God Elwin return before before Ma consumes all of us? That's why I must leave. We must bring someone that can help us stop the Ma. Gelly understands. Good. I want you to keep an eye on things for me, Gelly. Okay? Gelly will. And Gelly promises to give no one else pleasure until God Elwin returns. Good. Oh, hey, Elwin. As an aside, you know where on the map where we might potentially pop out. Could you possibly ask her if she could try to get one of her ten rules as close to there as possible? Gelly, would you be able to get a tendril without putting yourself in any danger close to where he said? Gelly will, will place tendril as close as possible there, and keep it there for as long as necessary until God Elwin returns. As long as you're not in danger. Of course. Well, Gelly's willing to risk a little danger. No danger, Gelly. 
Okay. Okay. All right. I give her a little hug. <laughs> you feel a little tingle through your arms and stuff as a couple of your tendrils touch you. <laughs> all right. Well, that's that's all I needed to do, guys. Whenever you are ready. All right. Anyone else? Nope. Yeah, good. And you, I think we should get out of here before Whatever. your wife sees you. I have no idea. What oh, you're that's about. right. <laughs> no, we gotta go. Guys, <laughs> we have to go. Seriously. Why? <laughs> ah, <laughs> Demos. Uh, you have you. returned to yeah. me. Where is she comes darting in. She comes <laughs> darting in from I a corner of the room. Just, I was informed by one of my spies that you had come back to our oh. plane. And. So, no. I hate to break it to you, lady who thinks she's married to the Deimos. I am not even the Deimos. The Deimos is doing other things. I am just a... You see, you see her back, her back just bristle with spines that just come out from her, just, just shoot out, like, like, erect from her, her spine. You recognize <laughs> the, the... Jokes on you. And she says... I shoot out my, uh, ink spot. <laughs> um, ink to escape. <laughs> But it's really just a pile of shit. I shoot incredibly with fast speeds, and I shoot away like a fucking rocket. No one can see anything. <laughs> she says, "She says, um, she, 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 she's swimming back towards you, right?" Um, and she says, "Demos," she says, "Um, my suction cups have been longing to attach themselves to you again." Uh, I don't know. <laughs> hey. Oh, what is that over there? <laughs> she says, "What, Demos?" You ready for me to not trick you? So you're you're swim you're swimming around trying to stay away from her. Pick a card, any card. I pull out some cards. I'm like, pick one. What you're stopping and you're you're showing her yes. playing cards. Pick a card, any card. This is a trick I learned for you. She says. Okay, whatever this right. game is, Demos, I yes, will play along. Good game, so good. Yes. No, now don't show me the card you pick. Now for the special part. I need you to hide it on the other side of the city. <laughs> I mean, it's a serious magic trick that I didn't just make up. She looks at you. She says, Demos. Yes, it's my name. She says, Let us not play these games, Demos. I know you have urgent business to attend to. I heard of how you tore through the fabric of our realm to arrive here. My spy side. She says, I know you're not long for here. I just wanted to let you know that I have not forgotten you. And I will not allow you to forget me. Remember, we are bonded for life. Yes. So, my death ward procced. And the only problem when that happens, illegally, I was dead for a second. <laughs> but I'm not the lawyer. And then, as I walk away, I slap her on the butt like a good buddy. Like, <laughs> go get him, kid. And then I forgot what I just did. I'm like, oh, shit. And then I run. I run. The tentacles the flare up and they start reaching out towards you and you just kind of dash off. Elwin. Uh, uh, Renly and Adis, um, the rest of you guys watch Deimos kind of like like sprinting around, rushing all over places. Zivarishi is chasing him, kind of like um, Wily e. Coyote and the Roadrunner. Um, what do you guys do? Uh, Renly, did you see my message? Renly? I'll play Renly. Uh, no, I didn't. I, was to I totally oh, told Renly that. Rinley could use her 10th level spell to create a copy of you for uh, Zivarisi. And it would <laughs> yeah. behave... Then it would behave like you. Well, Rinley's not here to make the, that decision. So I'm just um, just head back. You guys want to go? Elwin, you ready to go? Yeah, let's go. Let's All right. do it. So... Um, you draw your teleportation circle on the ground, Elwin, and you know you're not able to teleport here. The only times you've been able to teleport is when you attach yourself to one of um, Gelly's tendrils 
and to teleport further down the line of it, using it as a guide. The the flow of, of chaos here is and um and the interaction of the weave is still very foreign, very very um unhospitable for the for teleportation type spells. But in your mind you have fixed in place the three vigils like like lighthouses in a dark, stormy night. Um you can you have fixed in your mind the light the, the vigils of Elysium where Achelia um, rules as gatekeeper, as divinity of the ro of the realm, and you know that if you wished, you could ch um, channel teleport, and send you and whoever else you wish in your circle, to one of those vigils. I will gather um, my energies and I will teleport us all to the vigil where uh, satellites are set, casting okay. teleport. So that's Tears Vigil. Um, as you as you dash out, uh, as you as you cast it, Deimos, you're you're dashing all over the place. You see Elwyn's spell. You and he are, are in tune enough, um, and you you step into the circle just as the as a teleportation spell triggers. I got him. You turn around, and you see Jivarishi, um, um. You look into her, her, her eyes as she's just swimming towards you. She says, But Deimos, I have something so important to tell you. And as the, the, tr the spell triggers, she says, We're... And then you're gone. Whoa. Joke's on you. She's totally I'm pregnant. technically a priest. She's Can't so pregnant. Kids. Oh, shit. Renly, you're going to be a grandma. That's so true. <laughs> <laughs> Alright. You it's guys... not fuck with our things, Deimos. <laughs> yeah, I know. That's better fucking hot. <laughs> right. You can't say, I can't go out. I gotta watch the kids. <laughs> <laughs> okay. You Does, guys... Is that picture black for you guys or just me? Yeah, it's black for me. No, oh. it'll never fuck with your stuff, Elwyn, because Renly can just make a copy, a copy of Midas to take care of the kids. Or, uh, Deimos to take care of the kids. So this has not loaded for you guys? No, it's just completely black. It doesn't even say loading. Which oh, map? Oh, weird. Here, let me unshare it. I was checking my Destiny 2 stats. I've played 678 hours. Mm. Nice. <laughs> I'll be right back work no it's still black um try dragging the panel a little bit to adjust the size sometimes that'll make it refresh itself it's weird so we're at tears vigil right then that's the one that she's at yeah so you can see it Adis? yeah i can see it okay um, I don't know, the rest of you guys might have to refresh, like, flush your caches or something like that. That's weird. Um, Until next time. Yeah, you guys arrive at Tears Vigil. Um, and as you, as you kind of settle down, you hear, um, the clanging of hammers, um, striking anvils. You feel the heat of forge fire as, as Satellizer. Um, hard at work. Um, her her skin, her the, the 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 skin on her face and neck and arms and shoulders glistening with a sheen of sweat. Um, just laboring over these forge fires. What was she left making for Deimos? I forget. Um, I actually forget too. <laughs> I actually don't remember what she was doing. She was something, it was something with those big balls, wasn't it? The eyeballs or whatever? The, like, sacks? Oh, that's... No, 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 she made that into his helmet. His, um... Oh, yeah, that's his helmet right. Of absorption. That's the helmet. That's right, that's right. <laughs> I think you left her. So, you guys arrive, and you see her, her there, and she's, um, she's hammering there, and what she's doing is she's... She's instructing, 
um, an equally tired and and um, and um, glistening with sweat individual next to her. Oh, fork. <laughs> the two of them are working in t like in tandem over single anvil. Satellizers holding these tongs with one hand, holding this blade in place. Both of them have hammers, and she's calling out instructions um, to Vork um, as you do it. So, so you guys get closer, and you hear their voices kind of carrying across. Um, she says, "No, no, 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 no. You, 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 you. You're doing it wrong. I've told you so many times. So many fucking times. All right? Do it as I do it. One of my hits. One of your hits. One of my hits. One of your fucking hits. You stupid blue lizard. Right? Um, you, you see Vork over there going, oh, 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 I'm sorry, mistress. I'm trying my best. And the two of them can keep working. What do you guys do? Uh, apparently, Satellizer made Vork uh, her. He's now her bitch. Yeah, you left him there to. Tr you left him there to train under her. I I know, but like his personality is very very whipped at the moment. I love it. <laughs> yeah. So you get closer and you see that that Vork is there, whole, um, hammering, and you get closer and you see that he's he's. He's topless and wearing a um, uh, a pair of assless chaps. <laughs> oh my god! He, he, he's totally been getting tapped. <laughs> I think Deimos is stunned. Hey Vork, your mm -hmm. vagina's showing. What? Vork, Vork has no fucking vagina. Vork is a man's man. He goes, also oh. backpack. He looks over and satellizers there glaring at him. Sorry, mistress. Vork will keep on working. Sorry. I'm going to turn to satellizer and say, Hi, it's been a while. She looks over in your direction and says, Oh, hey, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's been a while. Where'd you guys been? been like months? Uh, the fuck? Yeah. Yeah, we've been up in Lunaria and, um, we got the vigil there. We just need someone to take it over. Oh, you need like a divinity or whatnot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, hell. You got any of those? Uh, here, no. Um, you know, we've just basically been working on improving this place. A lot of the towns and and and, and you know, just areas of you know, like temples and shit had been torn down. So Kelly has been going around trying to fix the place up, uh, recreating some of the indigenous population and shit. Um, she has me working on this, this decorative stuff right now. Uh, this guy I've worked here, he's, he's a good hand. Um, he's kind of a bitch, but, you know, I take what I get. <laughs> hey, um, can we use that, that looking glass thingy that we, that we were able to, to use last time? We know that glitter gold is around here somewhere. We gotta find this little bitch ass too. Oh, the beaconary? Yeah. yeah, yeah, just head on over. Sweet. Later. Vork says, Please, please. He, he kind of he comes up with you, Elway. He says, Please. He says, Don't leave me here with her. She's. She's vicious. I can see you're getting stronger, Vork. This is doing you some good. Stronger? Yes. Oh. Uh, it, it's... He says... She makes me do things no man should have to do, you know? Well, more. that's because you're not a man, Vork. You're more than that. <laughs> you're not a quitter. Vork is no quitter. Vork is... Vork is a fierce barbarian. What's still? Then you can do this. I believe in you. Oh, you do shit. everything she needs you to do. You've got this. Yeah, just keep taking it. <laughs> it's just, it's, but it's fine. This Vork has always been a giver, not a taker. But oh, fine, Vork will keep on taking it. 
Is it worse than, than when you were hanging out with us? <laughs> you remember? You lost the use of your whole body. <laughs> you shit yourself all the time. <laughs> you're you're pretty much like a backpack for a while. This is Vork has a way of getting into the worst circumstances, doesn't Vork? Um, at that point, Damos comes walking up. Oh shit, guys! It's my backpack. <laughs> He's, oh, Damos! Fuck! He says. I need you and your big man to ease to get me the hell out of here. Wait, where did you do that? Miss Satellite, she's got me wearing just these ashless chaps. I don't even know where my sword and my clothes are. And she's been forcing him to be him. she's been forcing him to be a taker, Damos. Is it working in your training though? Well, I suppose I'm I am. I am a bit you. stronger. Good. Let's see. <laughs> nice oh smash, my god! Smash him into the ground. Yeah, you 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 cave his chest in. <laughs> Fuck! I go tree form and I heal him. Says laser. What are you doing? He's collapsed I'm on the ground. His, his chest stronger. is caved in, right? And he's he's like coughing up blood. He goes, "Fuck!" Right, he's like, <laughs> "You've been taking it easy on him. What are you doing? He needs to get strong." He says, "Oh wait, you said get him strong. Is that what yeah. you said?" Yeah, get him strong. Oh, oh, shit. Total well, what are you doing? miscommunication. I'm you so sorry, guys. I'm so sorry. Okay, I thought you said okay. get him donged. Oh. <laughs> yeah, I get where you where you heard it wrong. The words are pretty similar, but um, yeah. So we'll just uh, put that under the bridge, and um, they won't even know. Honestly, Vork probably doesn't even notice, and um, we're just gonna make him stronger. Oh, oh. I get it. Okay. Oh, you know that makes a lot more sense now. Um, I think it would. But no, all, over, all around to physical strength, not anal strength. I understand. Okay, so I'll have to adjust the training regimen. Um, yeah, pretty much yeah, yeah, throw yeah. off the whole old plan and make up something new. Okay. Yeah, it is. It's, I mean, you can throw a little bit of the old stuff in. You just don't want to make sure he gets rusty at it. Not as many dildos. Oh, by the way. Did someone say dildo? Wait, wait, wait. Wait, wait, you just came from Lunaria, didn't you? Slam. Throw these bad puppies out. You came just... from Lunaria, didn't you? Did you get... Did you get... <laughs> she, she's like, she's, oh. her hands, her gauntleted hands, like, slammed down on the anvil. She's like... She's... Did you get him? Which did you get you them want? from that bitch? I got the best three. No, you took like 20. Okay, I took all of them. You, have you did, you took like 18 of them. Don't even fucking worry about it. She looks, she kind of turns her head back and forth. She says, Do not tell Cyrene about this. I have no or, idea or her what brother. you're talking about. You know, the other angels. Oh, no, no, no. I know what you're talking about, but I don't know what you're talking about. Says, I didn't see these here. You didn't and see I'm, these here. I'm pretty sure... <laughs> Pretty sure Kelia would not approve. Who? That's right. That's right. My man. What, My man. Yes, right. What, what yes, some unnamed person doesn't know won't hurt them, right? She turns around. She said, "Vork, get the hell over here." He comes. He comes scampering over. I'm serious, my mistress. She says, what is his reaction to the dildos? <laughs> no, he didn't see him. This was stealthy. <laughs> she says, now. "Vork." What do you think of this collection of apparatus that Deimos has brought from the plane above? Well, in Vork's professional opinion, uh, the varying <laughs> sizes and girths and lengths is all proper or, or uh, uh, can provide a full range of stimulation and of practical value. Um, satellite or nods, she says. Oh yes. Damn right, Vork. Vork yeah. says, "Damn right, Vork." And Vork looks at you, Demos, and there's like, there's like, like, a, a, like behind his, in, in, in the back of his eyes, there's like this little despair, and he's like, 
Demos. Demos. Get me out of here, Demos. I need you to grow stronger. Just power through it, my boy. One day, I'll be able to use you as a backpack again. It's Demos. Vork is a warrior. Vork yes, you are. can take You're any so... anything. Yes, you wait. And I hug him as hard as I can. <laughs> you break his shoulder. Oh, no, 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 you no. don't, you don't. He hugs Wait. you back. It's a nice big, it's a nice big manly embrace. <laughs> this time I was... Take it for the team. You got this. And then I slap him on the ass on the way out as I walk away. Um, he, he, he hops up and down in pain. Ow, 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 ow. Shit, it's, it's, it's tender, Demos. Tender. Tender. That means... The muscles are growing, I think. It must be true. Must be true. Must be. Well, you have a lot in store for you, Vork. Um, you see, uh, so as, as... I wave at the dildos. Uh, Midas. <laughs> yeah. Can I cast suggestion on Vork and suggest that he fully embrace this lifestyle to its fullest degree for the next eight hours and then decide whether he really likes it or not? Sure, sure. He's got, he's got he really 33. crap stats. Yeah, he's, yeah he's, there's no way he's making that. Here, let's <laughs> roll. Yeah, he doesn't move. He fails. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, Deimos, um, Satellite returns, and as you're leaving, she says, Oh, uh, by the way, um, like, uh, just fulfilling the, the agreement, um, you brought the, the apparatus, and yeah. I will give you something in return. No, it's not quite finished yet, but I've yes. kind of had this idea working. Um, yes. Don't open it until you're off this plane. Okay. Can I have a guess of what it is? <laughs> she she looks at you and she says, she tosses her hair a little bit and she says, "Um, you'll like it. Just don't don't open it until you're off this plane." All right, all right. I like what you what you're throwing down. They must love surprises, unless Midas makes them. Then they're terrible <laughs> surprises. Hey, Demos. But uh, I whisper to you, based on the empirical evidence at hand, I bet you anything. I'll bet you. I'll bet you a gold that when you open that box, it's a magical bubble. Yeah. I'll bet you. Uh, all data I met opening the box to the next plane, but we have stuff to do here. Yes, we do. Why do you talk about butt plugs? Are, are you able to teleport us over there, Elwin, or are we gonna have to foot it? Wait a second. I'm gonna fly. Yes, I will. Uh, I'll ride my Elwin. Okay. I'll, I'll bring up Hiccup so Damus can ride him. Actually, even though I think I can actually fly I'll now, do... but I actually choose to think that I can't. How fast, I do you, bug. how fast do you fly? Oh yeah, we got glitter bug. Glitter bug? Or hiccup. 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 Yes. I name it glitter bug, but yes, hiccup. What's glitter bug? Okay, now I wanna actually what would happen if we did get a butt plug? Like a really strong one. Oh, here we got on this. I mean, you have a condom on your head. No. You had dildos. No, 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 no. He has a dildo on his head. No, no, seriously. Think we got like a really well done made butt plug. Okay, hear me out on this. Okay. And then we summoned Adis's mom. All right. <laughs> She's sticking up there. Okay. Just think of the amount of pressure that would build up. When this thing shot out, he, he, a rail gun would be nothing. Dude, uh, we would take that mom in a second. Demos, yeah. we can already we can already do that. We don't Demos, have a mom for that. Demos, you feel a yeah. tapping on your shoulder. You do. Uncle. <laughs> what? <Bust. laughs> Whatever are you talking about? That didn't sound very appropriate for a priest. What? I wholeheartedly oh, agree. What you heard was actually code. And sticking to that story. Have you okay, met Hiccup? Yeah. Wait, wait. If, I go if, and Demos, 
If Excuse Deimos me, how is her uncle, what is Rinley to her now? That Rinley is Deimos' mom. <laughs> oh, <God>. <laughs> <laughs> um, you didn't Rinley's know that we have Rinley's was this pretty much now? Alabama. She's we like, have a lot of news, so Kaylee. <laughs> she says, I gather, I can see you've, you've changed somewhat. There's, there's a different aura, a different sense about you. You've encountered and done much, haven't you? Well, yes, we have. Um, we have found the vigil for Lunaria. Uh, we just need a divine source to take it over. But uh, more importantly, Deimos is now married. Apparently, <gasps> he's about to have a child. Uncle! And then we found out that Renly and Tempest are Deimos's parents, but they're... Wait, what? Bear Renly and Tempest. Uh, somehow, in the future, Deimos will be born to them or something. Also, um, we're looking for Glitter Gold. Do you know where he's at? <laughs> she says, she says oh. she, she's like, she's trying to puzzle out everything you just said. She says, truly, the previous pantheon of gods were <laughs> mischievous and bacchanalian at the, at the worst. And or, if this is true, Renly, Deimos. Uh, uh huh. Well, I have no idea what they're talking she, she puts about. Her hands have up, you says, met the pickup? She says, I am not one to judge, so just know that I love you all, and I'm so thrilled you're back here. Um, the veil has, has been brought down. I'm sure you've been aware. Yeah, we killed. Yeah, we did. Give me a no idea at all. Jesus. The, the path between the mortal lands and Elysium has been reopened. I gather that's why you're here. Would you care to see the realms below? Yes, let's do it. She she waves her hand in the air, and suddenly, you guys are at the beaconary. She got pimped out while we were gone. She says, "I have been learning how to channel my will through Elysium a bit more." It's quite fascinating. Being a goddess is... She pauses for a second. She says, There was something in the weave earlier today. I sense you were part of it. Yeah, we punched a dude in the face. There was a grand disturbance. Yeah, that douchebag who put up that veil apparently did a bunch of shit to the weave, and then when Deimos, like, literally punched through his soul, um, it apparently all came unraveled. I see. Well, she says, it's changed a bit, but I've been, I've managed to keep it rather under control. Um, it's, it's, it's a change for the better, I think. A lot of the devil's influence on the weave and their, their traction upon it has, has been broken. It's gone a bit wild. I'm, I'm, I'm still trying to, to take it in. I, I, I rather feel that it's my job to, to tame it. But I, I, I don't quite understand the, the, the breadth of it. The weave is rather vast. So, when you... She says, just be careful. Be careful for the immediate future while I, I try to get a handle upon it. Things are a bit wild out there. Yeah, it kind of had a explosive unraveling. That's that's a word for it, yes. She 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 uh, this whole time you've been walking closer to the beacon area. She and she she gets there. She puts her hand at the base of it, touching her hand to it. You look around and you see these these large orbs of stone just levitating in the air. Um, eternally levitating. They've been floating in place for eons. And as she touches the, the beaconary, its eyes open. And she says, There. You can look down to the mortal realms now. To our home. She takes her hand away. What do I see? Well, you have to touch it. I touch it. 
She says, and I touch Elwyn <laughs> firmly. She says, I like it. You'll have to look for yourselves. I've, I've refrained from looking. I don't think I'm strong enough to yet. I, I fear what has happened to my brother, to our land, to our people. I, no, I don't want to know. Not now. I'll leave you to it. The beacon area is open. Um, if you wish to traverse, it will take a great deal of power, but I, I, I think you can manage. Um, Kelly, before now, you, you go. See. Yes. About glitter gold, have you sensed this presence? Do you know where he's at? He is on the mortal realm for sure. She pauses for a second. She hesitating. It's. And then she reaches out and touches the beaconary, closing her eyes, and, she, and then for just just a couple seconds, and then she she rec her her hand recoils off of it. Um, she says, "Yes. Look." She says. Uh, you're pausing for a second. She says. And the land of Talthalas, the kingdom of Eremor. The town of Heath Glen. There you will find Glittergold working his wiles. Thank you. She smiles and nods. She says, I should be going. It's a lot of work keeping a world running and organizing the weave. I love you all. You know that you always have safe haven here in my lands. And once once I have settled this place and have explored my power of the weave longer, I, I would so I would so desire to continue our journeys together, perhaps further up the plains. We would love that. Twould be grand. Well thank you. She gives you a hug. She gives um she goes and gives the rest of you guys a hug. And she shimmers away. All right. I touch the thing and look. First, I'm going to look for Eloise. Okay. You peer down. Um. the beacon area. He's totally that NSA guy right now who's going to be peering in from a satellite in on some like orgy going on. Your mind travels over and you realize that the beacon area can see across all planes. The the myriad of worlds, creatures and beings. You see the effects of the god breaking um laying waste across the lands um, as different deities collapse and as different angels took up their their portfolios and as those angels have begun, begun to buckle in their strength and and have begun to fail in, in holding up the various aspects of divinity that were charged to them um, nature itself has changed um, the the uh, you're, you're getting a glimpse as you're passing over worlds worlds in disarray nature itself upheaved and turned over um, even the most the most um, basic parts of, of mortality of humanity um, aspects like like courage aspects like like um, the thrill of the hunt um, the, the the serene nature of of moonlight, um, the wiles of deception, things like that, all, all parts and parcel of various, the portfolios of various gods, um, have begun to unravel, and it has had gr vast effects through the material realms.
you narrow in onto your own plane. And as you move there, you see the realm, the, the globe of your planet um, floating in space like a, you know, like a blue and green marble in the, in, ac across a black expanse. You draw closer to it, and you can see the land masses um, structured across the oceans. Um, you circle around, orbiting counterclockwise uh, against the rotation of the planet. And you see... Um, you pass over um, a couple of different continents. You see Aurelium, you see Talthalas, and finally you see, you see Tandesh. Focusing on Tandesh, you, you move in and you see a land scarred. The whole northwest blackened, huge crevasses and, and tears through the land. Um, echoing from the the point of where where the nexus was, where you did final battle, and and the re and the realm was torn asunder, cracked out across the land. Um, you pass over, um, and you see the land looks different. To, to, just to put it plainly, the land looks different. You're trying to hone in on where. where Eloise would be. You focus on the dwarven domicile uh, um, near Hasselin. You focus there, but you see there um, the towns and the cities that they've built um, abandoned. Some structures still up, but not many of them have fallen down. Um, you're not sure if due to age or just due to being un due to unuse. Um, you look elsewhere, you look to the land of Mistrala, the silver spire toppled, the land itself wasted, abandoned, nothing. You go to Ospium, the capital city of the nation of Erelin, and there you see mighty walls, um, the one, walls that you yourself and your party had once defended against against the hordes of undead against the onslaught of reapers and um and Incamel, the were to rask himself the city the walls are torn down um the, the massive city um looks still has life within it but much reduced whole chunks of the uh, of of the city are, are darkened and black and as if burned. You're not sure where else to look? What do you do, Ellen? What about in Cragland? You shift your vision over to Cragland, Cragland to the mountain engraved city of Vortum. The city that was carved into the mountain. Torn down by by Incamel and his battle with um, Modrin, the the dwarven god of crafting. Um, you see the city. A large chunk of it had been cleaved from the mountain, fallen down into the 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 canyon that that it, it hovered over, the valley it hovered over. But there. You see. A population of dwarves. Scaling and crawling over the mountain like ants, um, slowly moving chunks and and of stone boulders and and hillsides themselves, slowly rebuilding, slowly reconstituting and reforming the city that was once its glory. Can I focus in amongst the dwarves to see if they're part of the clan that Eloise was leading? You Yes, you can. If it helps at all, remember I gave her my teleport ring too. Uh, can I use that as a beacon to try to focus to find her as well? Yeah, yeah, for sure. 
closing your eyes and focusing on the familiar magics, um, you're able to find it. There beneath the, uh, there amongst the, the, the expansive population um, that has now brought, um, migrated back to Cragland, you see the dwarves. 30, 40,000 strong. And among them, laboring with her fellow dwarven kind, you see Eloise. Okay. Her hands, you know, um, calloused and dirty with the rock that she's moving. Um, her shoulders a little bit slumped with labor. She picks her head up and she looks up at the sky as if sensing, sensing something. He looked down and he realized that she's aged um, a little bit. You see some lines across her face that were not there before. You see the wear of years that have not been there previously. She's still a strong, beautiful woman. Um, but time has passed. Okay. Um, after I see her and feel like a piece of shit for trying to get this other one, Karina... For a little bit, um, I now my my strength, my resolve has been strengthened to to get this over with. Um, knowing that she's alive, I'm going to try to find to look for one more thing. Okay. I'm going to leave the prime material and look back upon Lunaria. And I want to look deep inside the maw of the void to see what is down there. To see what we're facing. Roll a wisdom saving throw. Do you want to use your enhanced spark of insight right now? Can I, can I foresight him? Wisdom saving throw? Wisdom saving throw. Oh, a d5 then... would be good. Yeah, I'm going. And then I'll just gonna roll a d10. Times That's a four. four. Mm -hmm. 120? Oh, yeah. Okay, so that's a four? Yeah. Um... The Luminant Beaconary was crafted by gods of ancient years um, to look down to the mortal realms. It has difficulty looking upward to the, 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 the mountain above. But through fear, sheer force of will, you turn its gaze um, skyward. <laughs> Gazing up the mountain, you see the expanse of Lunaria the world itself torn apart and being drawn into the void. You look at the void, and as you gaze downward into its its maw, you can feel you can feel your consciousness and your will be begin to shake. Um, <laughs> what the hell, Damos? <laughs> That's what he sees, right? I'm trying to help him. Wait, wait, the belly button. The, the belly button is. I'm the actually. What is this? Happy. He's licking. What are you licking this picture? What the hell? What were you talking about? <laughs> oh, fuck. Okay, okay. In my defense, that was a bad day. <laughs> That's a much better picture. Stop oh, it! Oh my no, goodness. To, oh, what the fuck? What the hell? Why? It it's the maw of the void. Like, come on. Why? Now. You're welcome. <laughs> what the hell? You're welcome. Oh. That's for you guys. Cause I can't uh. take that one home. Um. Um. You can come back to me if you want. And to everyone else. 
there. There, that make it really easy <laughs> for you. Damn, no, I was. That's the same picture. The same picture is fine. No, it's not. Yeah, it is. Oh fuck! All right, let me fix that. Right <laughs> we were dealing with Albert at the mall. Come on, not that far. Okay, Ellen. Oh my goodness! Oh! Oh! It's the maw. Oh! <laughs> I'm gonna stop there because I'm uh, starting to feel bad. Why do you have these pictures? Well, I typed in um, my 600 pound life uh, in Google. <laughs> And then I just kind of followed the picture trail. Come on now. <laughs> oh my goodness. Can't unsee. Alright, um. Okay, um, Ellen, what you are experiencing as you gaze down into the mall, um, your, your, your mind, your vision goes up and travels down that whirlpool. Um, going deeper and deeper into it um, you can feel your very consciousness beginning to tear um, you're holding it together through f sheer force of will your eyes begin to glow blue with awakened energy you're, you're keeping your consciousness intact um, you see You see movement. You see um, hunger, and you, and you feel um, devouring hunger incarnate. Um, you're not sure if it's a figment of your mind trying to piece together this extreme force of nature. And, and making it take physical form in your in, in your vision, or if there really were swirling rows of teeth um, descending down into the depths of the maw. Um, but as you gaze into this 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 perspective, um, your vision goes blank, and uh, you pass out. Okay. Uh, the rest of you guys, Deimos, Renly, Adis, Deimos, anything, anything you want to do? Fell over. You should go check on him. He's in my hands. Deimos, Deimos, what do we do? Oh, it's easy. I touch the stone and I grab glitter gold. How much is that cost him? So you're trying to bring glitter gold to where you are? Yeah, really easy. Hey, yo, down that glitter gold. I'm like, get up here, asshole. Okay. So, you're, so is is that what you guys are going to do? You're going to try to get guard glitter gold to come up to, the, to your current realm? Yeah, why the hell not? That's a plan? Everyone good with a plan? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You can just imagine, you know, Renly doing the emoji for Shruggy. Like, who knows? Oh god, we're screwed. Sounds okay. like fun. Alright. Oh, I don't, I don't think he's gonna come, but you can certainly try, Damas. <laughs> well, you guys are gonna have to find out. So this... Alright. This is the end of... your journeys through Lunaria. At least the most, most of the journey. For next session, um, we're gonna take a look at what is happening down on, on the Material Realms. I will need you all to roll a level 5 character Ooh. as we take a journey down to, to see what's happening, what the world is happening on the Prime Material Plane. And yes, there will be Garl, Garl Glitter Gold will make an appearance. Ooh. Are we okay. rolling stats? How does this work? Yeah, yeah. I mean, you can roll stats or you can take, you can use your, um, the, the, the array, but whatever you want to do. So level 5 characters. Heading into next week. Sweet. Well, thanks for running. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Well, thanks, you guys. 
Peace. Later, right. guys. Yeah, Have awesome. a good night. See night you guys night. next week. It was fun. Thank you. So do Take we care, guys. roll five and like drop one? Oh, drop roll four and drop one. I don't remember how. Yeah, it. you roll four, roll four d six and drop one. Drop the lowest. You drop the lowest. Oh, that's a nice one. Holy crap! All right, guys. I'll see you guys next week. Take care, Alan. I want to be ready for next week, so okay. Um, Midas. Yeah. I should be fine for Monday next week, but there is a possibility I won't be able to make it because um, that's when our movers are coming. Okay. Um,